Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Kavika Carlson, founder of Hawaii Running Project. Welcome, Kavika. Hi. Thanks. Uh, it's great to be here. Thanks for being on the show. So let's talk about how you got started with Hawaii Running Project. Uh, so Hawaii Running, Running Project started uh, back in 2010. Um, I was a coach at Nike Town um, in Honolulu. And unfortunately, during the big financial crisis, they shut down. So we were, um, we were looking around for another place to move it to because uh, we had about 100, 150 runners. And they're like, where are we going to be running? So um, Lululemon stepped up and uh, we had it there for about a year. And then they decided that they didn't want to host it anymore. So um, I'm like, well, we got to keep the running program going. So we just started up uh, Hawaii Running Project from scratch. And uh, I think we met three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, um, usually at the park, but maybe some different locations for the long runs. And uh, yeah, that's how it got started. So how did you get started with running and becoming interested in running? Well, that's kind of a funny story because growing up, I used to hate running. I used to do other sports like uh, swimming, wrestling, uh, cycling, uh, baseball. And for me, running was punishment. Uh, you know, if you mess up, it's like, hey, go run a lap. So um, I was working in the hotel business and um, uh, and uh, the new there's a, there was a new hotel that opened up on the Big Island. So some of my buddies transferred over there and I went to go watch them. I went to go visit them. And um, the Ironman triathlon was taking place that same weekend. So while they were at work, I went to watch it. And I was just so inspired by uh, the athletes. I'm like, oh my gosh, look, it's like, they're amazing. I want to do that. So um, I literally went to the library. I checked out a book um, and I got uh, how to do a marathon. So swimming and uh, uh, cycling were easy for me. But I figured in, in order to run a marathon, I had to figure out how to do that. So um yeah, I got Jeff Galloway's book of uh, marathon. It's a walk run method, and you can marathon, you can do it. So I just followed the plan that he had here, there, and um, five months later, Maui Marathon was my first uh, running race ever. And did you run the whole thing, or did you walk run it? Well, see, I was supposed to follow that walk run method, um, and I, I don't know what happened, but I just got so excited at the beginning. I just ran the whole first part, then I got tired, and then so. Most runners hit the wall at 20K. That's where I hit the wall. Uh, it's, uh, it's 20 miles, sorry. Uh, and I, so that's when I started run walking, the kind of the rest of the way. So yeah, I, I did walk on and off at the end of the at the end of the run, but I, I made it through. So I was super yeah. happy about that. And then after that, how many marathons have you done? Well, then I got into like I was I was a, I was still a jogger, and all I did was want to finish. Uh, a marathon every year and then i did i did do an iron man that next year and then i did a uh, iron man every year for the next four years so i was a little bit into running at that point and when i moved to oahu um that's when i joined up the nike town run club and i really got into racing and um from that point i got it of course when you start racing you want to like race the longest or, you know the longest distance so that's when i really started getting into marathons and so since then I've done over 200 marathons. Wow. Yeah. So tell us about your personal best. I saw some stuff on the website. I was very impressed. Uh, personal best. So, um, yeah, I, I had two really good coaches when I first started here, John Liao and his running club, and then Jerry Lingren. He's a world-famous runner. He had, he had like 57 American records, one world record. Uh, he was one of my coaches, and he really inspired me to, like, um, improve a lot. And I, I increased my mileage. And so my first marathon was three hours, 54 minutes. And then um, a couple of years after I moved to Honolulu, I dropped it down to uh, two hours and 53 minutes was my best. So I improved like a whole hour. I went sub three, qualified for Boston. And yeah, it was, it was super exciting. Yeah, that is very exciting. That's impressive. So uh, do you ever get any kind of joint pain when you're running? I mean, I'm curious because that's what happens. I mean, I haven't tried running. Yeah, a lot of runners say that it wears out their knees, and it's. I think actually in the long run, it's inactivity that that will wear your knees out. It's more more of your diet and um just like running improperly that that will give you the knee pain. So um, I did go through a period where so when I first got that was that was when I first got into running. Um, 
I didn't really know a lot about nutrition then. I, I, I was starting to uh, get into the vegetarian diet because I heard it was uh, more healthy. But I, I you know, I, I still didn't do that much research and I didn't know much about it. So I was I was taking all these protein powders and it turns out by taking too much protein, that was just creating havoc on my joints. And so I um I happened to work with this guy and he handed me this book. And it was called Nathan Nathan Pritikin's Diet for Runner. And now Nathan Pritikin wasn't a, a vegetarian or vegan, but he basically he was, his was plant-based and um, uh, eliminate processed foods and all that kind of stuff. So I went on, um, I went in that diet and then within months, all of my joint pain uh, just cleared up. And so I, yeah, I've been, um, I've, so I've been really lucky. So with the um, yeah. processed meat, do you mean like also pasta, rice, or like what level of processing is processed? Well, yeah, I mean, and technically those are the processed foods, but those, those probably are not as bad as anything that comes in a, a bag or a box or something like that, a can. Those are the ones that are that are not really good for you. And so you could be you could be like a vegan and claim that you have a good um, a good diet and you could be eating like Oreo cookies and, uh, you know, vegan ice cream and stuff like that. And it's still not a, 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 a whole food plant-based diet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the one that they, they have evolved towards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what kind of things can you tell people about? You said also the posture is important so like, what can people try to do to change their posture to make it easier for them to run without joint pain? Yeah, so running form. Um, when we do our workouts, um, we usually start them with running drills. So the running drills are just like any other sport, basketball, football, baseball, where you're doing these drills over and over again. And so um, we, do, uh, we do what we call butt kicks, um, and that's to have a nice recovery in the back. Uh, if you look at the Kenyan runners, they really, um, they really have a nice extension out in back. And then we do high knees, uh, high knee running, high knee skips. Um, we do some lateral movements so that you're moving at your hips and you're not moving or twisting at your upper body uh, and things like that. So th those drills, because you do them over and over again, it just kind of gets ingrained in you and uh, it helps your form. Well, that's cool. So you do have a day for drills then? I saw your schedule and there's different things on different days. Can you tell us about the different things you do on different days and where a beginner could potentially go to the Hawaii Running Project meetup and start off like a complete beginner? Sure. Right. Um, so there's three basic workouts as a runner. Most people, like when they become a runner, they do, they just jog outside their neighborhood and they do the same thing over and over again. So it's kind of like if you go to the gym and you lift the same weight and you're just going to kind of plateau and you're not going to improve. So what we do is, um, yeah, so Tuesdays we do speed work. That would be an example of that would be like 200 meter repeats, 400 meter repeats, something like that. Um, and then you take a little break in between. So what that's doing is that's, uh, that's making you really improve your lung power. Uh, that's called VO2 max. That's the maximum amount of oxygen that your muscles can intake. We call it TNT, our Tuesday night training. Uh, an explosive workout. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, Thursdays, we do a medium distance tempo run. So that would be like running a little bit faster than a jog. Um, so you're kind of on the edge of being like out of breath. Like if you were running with somebody, it's a little bit difficult to hold a conversation, but you can still manage to do that. Um, that's like a, a, a tempo threshold run. Um, and we do that around Diamond Head, which is about four and a half miles. But if you're a beginner, um, we do have shorter distances. That's like uh, 1.8 miles going around the park or three miles up to the lighthouse. And the same thing going back to Tuesday nights, because we're doing like, for example, we'll do um, eight 400 meter repeats. Um, you could just, if you're a beginner, you can just do one, sit out one, do one, sit out one. We even encourage walkers, like walk runners, to join our program because, um, uh, especially on Tuesday night, because if you're, you're doing um, the loops around, we do them on Magic Island, if you're doing a little loop, um, you're going to wind up in the same spot. So it doesn't matter how fast you go, whether you're uh, walking, running, or jogging, you're still going to wind up in the same place. Friday night, we do a social run. It's Friday night fireworks. Uh, we meet up at Alamoana Beach Park um, near Magic Island, and that's, it takes place at 6 o'clock, and we don't have any kind of a set program. It's just whoever shows up, you go out and you do like a social run with each other. Um, 
And then uh, seven o'clock we have a potluck, and then uh, seven forty-five is the fireworks. And then during winter time, or during summertime, they change it to eight o'clock. So anyway, we watch the fireworks, um, and that's just a really fun night for us. It's kind of you know power fun at the end of the week. Um, Saturday we have a Kapilani Park run. Um, it's a five k. It just goes uh, a loop and a half around the park. So that's another one. Also, the nice thing about that one is you can see how you improve. So like um, over weeks or months or a year, you can see how you improve your time on that run. And then Sunday, run, Sunday, we do our long run. And it just depends on what we're training for. In August, we started training for the Honolulu Marathon. And so now we're doing, uh, we started out doing long runs of six miles. And we're going to build up to about 20, 24 miles, depending on whether they're experienced or not. And then the same thing, even if you're a beginner and you don't, um, and you're near, uh, even if you're not training for the marathon, you can still show up on those days because we have alternate runs, not alternate runs, but um, alternate distances that you can do. So for example, we were uh, doing a 10 miler this week, but I also had three, five and seven mile options set up where you could just turn around, basically out and back, so you could turn around and do uh, a shorter distance. So Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we train five days a week. And that's all on our website. We're also on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We have we post lots of pictures. So you can see it's just not me and Kalani out there running. It's a whole group of people. We usually have about, um, you know, some of our smaller workouts, we might have five or six people. But some of our bigger ones, we might have like 20, 25 runners. So when you uh, run, you also take Kalani with you? Um, well, she's, she's a year old. So I've been bringing her for the last 11 months or so. Um, I'm a coach. I uh, walk now most of the time. And then um, every now and then she'll be sleeping. So I'll leave her at home with her mom. And I'll do an actual run. But um, yeah, I do. Um, I do walks with her a lot. And then I also do, um, part of the Hawaii running projects is we also do um, hiking and running tours. So like I mentioned this morning that I was at Manoa Falls. So we did do a hiking tour this morning and we took some people out to see the waterfall. So is that posted on your website as well or on Instagram for people who are interested? It is, it is. We have a, week, we have a weekly schedule and we post it on our website. Um, and that's, that's where also like all the pictures will be at. And if we have any news, um, we do have a mailing list. So if you go to Hawaii Running Project at gmail.com, you could just send us your email and we'll put you on the mailing list. And then we can send that schedule to you personally so that you have it every week. Well, that's great. Yeah. Uh, well, I forget what you said about the Friday now. And you said that's a good night for beginners. But how far is the distance on Fridays? Well, see, Friday night is um, we're out at Magic Island, Ala Moana Beach Park. And it's a social run, so we don't have anything planned. So, for example, um, my wife, when she got into running, she's not an athlete, but one time we were doing a holiday run, and we called it the Keiki Marathon. So it was 2.62 miles. So all she did is she walked around Magic Island uh, four times because it's a 0.6-mile loop out there, and she was amazed that she actually did it. She, she, and then that stuck in the back of her mind. And then the next year for New Year's resolutions, she's like, I think I want to run the Hulu Marathon. And I was shocked because she's not an athlete at all. But um, what we did is we just started training basically with a 10-minute Dale Away Run Walk method. And we built up the entire year. And she uh, did. She finished the okay. later. Yeah, so anyway... That would be a good night because you could just do loops around uh, Magic Island and then come and uh, join us for our part look and fireworks. However many loops. Yeah, maybe that's, I mean, it sounds like fun even if you don't want to do a marathon or anything, you know? That's a good Right. Run. That's the thing. Most people think, oh, if I'm a runner, I got to do a marathon. No way. I mean, you don't even have to run races. I just find that races are, um, they, 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 they set um, goals, like intermediate, intermediary goals for you and something to... Like that's achievable. So if you do a 5K, 10K, I mean, that would be great. But uh, 
a lot of people in our group are not, they're definitely not doing marathons. Um, like my wife said, marathon, that was too far. I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> but uh, she has done a couple of half marathons since. And uh, yes, we've been really busy the last year or so. Marathons too, or she's mostly running them now, or what's her progress? Uh, who is that? Your wife? Does she... My wife? Yeah. Um, after she did the marathon, she did a couple half marathons, um, in Maui, but, uh, last year, um, you know, Kalani was born and she took some time off. So she, yeah, she's not really running right now, but who knows? Maybe she'll get back into it. Yeah. I just got, uh, uh for, for Kalani's birthday, we, we just bought a, um, baby jogger, a oh, little nice. stroller jogger. So yeah. Uh -huh. and, I've never done it before. I actually have two older daughters. Um, they're both grown, live on the mainland. In fact, I have a four-year-old granddaughter. But I, when, back when they were young, I used to hike with them on my back. I used to have a backpack and uh, and a, a little pouch like this. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I never ran with them. I wasn't a runner back then. Mm -hmm. So um, I know you had on your website that you did 26 marathons in 26 days. Can you tell us how you accomplished that? Yeah, that was one of my crazier wins. Um, so, yeah, my coach, um, he has this training plan where, like, to get back in shape, you do 15 miles for uh, the entire month. Um, you could either do it, like, split it up and do it morning and evening. So uh, one year I did that, and that wasn't, uh, it wasn't that difficult because I used to run between, like, 80 and 120 miles a week. So that was kind of in the same range. But the next year, one of my buddies, uh, Jason Lester, he was, and uh, and actually uh, another guy that lives here on this island, Chet Jet. he's an ultra marathon runner. In fact, he's the first American that ever did a double deca Ironman. Anyway, they were doing this crazy race out in Italy. It's called a triple deca, triple deca Ironman. And that's a tongue twister. Um, it's a 30 times Ironman. They do one Ironman every day for 30 days. Wow. Sounds crazy, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> But um, I figured, well, if they're doing an entire Ironman, that's a two and a half mile swim, 112 bike, and a marathon. The least I could do is like train with them and do a marathon every day. So that's how it was kind of born. And then um, Jason Lester, he, he's this awesome guy. He just, uh, he always does some kind of charity work involved with his uh, crazy runs. So um, we decided we were, at the time, there was a lot of homeless living in Alamoana Park. Of course, they, they don't, uh, they don't let them live there anymore. But um we were going around, and what we did is we teamed up with an uh, uh, organization called um, yeah. Aloha Harvest, and they sell which from the uh, restaurants and uh, then feed it to the, those not fortunate uh, enough to, you know, have dinner on the table every night. So um, we we walked around the park, and we fed uh, us out there every night, and then we ran a marathon, and we let uh, it was 10 laps around Ala Moana Park. We let anybody that wanted to join us for you know, parts of it. No, of course, nobody nobody ran the whole thing with us. But we did have some people run up to like a half marathon. But most most of the time, people just ran a couple loops around with us. But um, yeah, that went out for 26 days. It was in December, so we had a special Christmas morning um, celebration, and there was a couple of families uh, that we invited with kids, and we did a toy drive, and we uh, passed out some presents for the kids. And so, yeah, they were very appreciative and, and thankful for that. And as far as the uh, run itself goes, like, I thought I would never make that, make it through. I'm like, how am I going to do a marathon every day? And so the first couple of days were rough, but through, um, like, proper recovery, ice, like, ice baths, uh, massage, uh, you know, kind of like a massage gun, um, rolling, and then uh, eating really, really good. Um, just a lot of new, super nutritious foods. Um, I was able to recover and run again the next day. Yeah. So you didn't really get really sore between the times because, you know, I know after the marathon, a lot of people are so sore for days and they have yeah. actually their policies, you know? So, um, yeah, what's the effect? Must yeah, a lot, a lot. A lot of the beginning uh, marathon runners, you're so in it, and it, me and myself included, like you could barely even walk down the stairs the next day. Like anything that's not level ground, you're like just agonizing. But um, by that point, I, I had already been running for about 15 years, so I had a really good base. But um, it was, it, I think it was the, the, the combination of all those little things that I was talking about, just making sure you pay, pay attention to the little details. And then um, people ask me, well, what did you eat every night to recover for the next day? And I'm like, a giant bowl of salad. And they're like, what? 
because I mean, you think you think about salads as rabbit food, but actually all those leafy greens, they have an unbelievable amount of minerals and vitamins. And those are the things that your muscles need to recover. So I, I actually think a salad was, was like key to my recovery. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, with your salad, do you have any dressings that you like to use? Like, what do you use for your dressing? Yeah, I would say 99% of the time it's, um, uh, nutritional yeast and some rice wine vinegar or, uh, or just rice vinegar. Yeah. That's, that's my go-to salad dressing. How about yeah. fruits? Do you like to eat a lot of fruits? Fruits? I'm eating fruits all day long. Yeah. So, uh, watermelon, pineapple, uh, those are good recovery fruits, fruits, but, um, I mean, we we live right next to Chinatown, so we could go down and, and we get dragged, I mean, all these kind of crazy fruits and stuff, but even the regular ones, apples, oranges, pears, um, mangoes, I mean, you name a fruit and I love it. <laughs> Same thing with Kalani here. She's a fruit lover too. So when you're running the marathon, do you keep some fruit in your pocket or what do you use for snacks? No, that one's a little bit diff difficult because you're on the run and I was running, I used to run, you know, competitively. So you run fast. So you just mainly have like a, a solu uh, some kind of a, a solution drink that you're drinking with all the uh, electrolytes and um, calories in it. Um, when we were doing, for example, the um, the 26 mile uh, marathons, or if we're doing just a trail, like I'm out here on the trail and stuff, so I've got a couple of bananas with me. I mean, if you're going slow enough, you can eat like fruits. They have a lot of fiber, so when you're running and you're bouncing, there there may be some stomach distress if you're eating a lot of fruit. So that's why things like gels and um, nutritional drinks are um, probably better. Yeah, but yeah. that's just, you know, you're just doing that, you know, once a day. And then the 90% the of your diet is going to be really good foods. Um, we did like a, a special beach to beach run. Um, we do put on a race every year that's called the Hawaii Kai Ultra Run. It's not really a race. It's more of a personal challenge. Yeah. I had our oldest team member. He's, he's at 82. Oh he God. runs with us. He, he still does it. He does marathons. Yeah, we've, we've had like six-year-olds, anywhere from six to eight to running with our group. Do people, when they train, do they try to make every single meeting? No, <laughs> there's nobody. I mean, I think Kalani here is the one that attends the most number of meetings. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we, we have people that come like only on Tuesday nights, like their work schedule, that's all it's going to allow, or Sunday mornings. Um, we do have people that come times a week, and there's a, there's a few of them. Um, that will run the majority of the time, but yeah, there's nobody that makes errors. If, if people want to train for a marathon, how much do you suggest that they run every week? Um, like, I guess they're going to be working up to that, right? So they would start at a certain amount and then they would, you know, like right before the marathon, no. run the full 26 or how does that work like your first time? No, you don't run the, the full 26. Um, in fact, for beginners, like if you start running past 20 miles, that's when you start to get injured a little bit um, on your first marathon. I used to train them up to 24 because I figure, oh, they, you know, if you get up to 24, then you can run 26. But I found that a lot of beginners wound up getting injured and they, they didn't even show up to the start line. So now we only go up to about 20 miles. Um, I think... Uh, well, okay, from 20 to 26 is a pretty big gap, but like on the day of the race, you're full of adrenaline and you've, 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 tempered, you've rested going into it. So, um, we found that, that people are able to make that jump from 20 to 26 pretty, pretty well. So we go up to 20 for beginners. Mm -hmm. And do you do the yeah. marathon generally every year with a group then? Or not always? So I've done the marathon. Um, I've started the marathon. 18 consecutive times. I was injured one year. I didn't finish it. That was my time to year. I did uh, some crazy birthday runs uh, uh, right before that. I wound up injuring my knee. Um, I ran up, I did uh, the, uh, for my 50th birthday, I ran um, 50 miles. I touched, touched the ocean down in Kihei. I ran 50 miles to the top of Hale, Haleakala, 10,000 feet. Oh, nice. And then a couple of yeah, and then one of my friends was supposed to run with me, but he wasn't able to make it. So he called me up like two days later, and he's like, "Hey, let's run around West Maui Mountains." So uh, that's a hundred kilometer run, so that's even further. So I got about forty miles into that, and I was, I wasn't in shape to do it, um, and well enough shape to do it. So I wound up injuring my knee, and that that carried. That was the end of October. That carried through to December. So anyway, 
Um, I wasn't able to finish the marathon that year. I, I dropped out at about uh, 16 miles. That's one of the few races ever I didn't finish. Um, but so anyway, I've showed up 19 years in a row. I finished uh, 18. I'm uh, sorry. Uh, I've showed up 18 years in a row. This will be my 19th this year. And then I lived on Maui also. So I did 11 over there. So I've been running a marathon every year for the last 30 years. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I plan to do it when I'm 100. I mean, it's only about 40 years from now, so if I can keep the streak going, it'll be great. <laughs> I think so. I mean, this is just amazing to hear that someone can be in such incredible shape like you. Um, and people are so concerned about protein all the time. Like, what do you say to these people who come in and they're concerned about getting enough protein for running? I know you said a little bit about the joints, but... Um... Yeah. I mean, as vegans, we know that the, the whole protein myth is totally overrated. Um, if you look at the biggest animals on Earth, you know, the elephants, the rhinoceros, the hippopotamus, they're eating uh, nothing but plants all day, and they don't have any kind of a protein. They're not going to die from protein deficiency. Um, the only people that have protein deficiencies in, in America are the ones that don't get enough calories, and that's basically the, the elderly, if they're not getting eating enough, or the, um, I got to keep going here, um, or the, uh, um, you know, if you have a dating disorder. But, you know, if if you are concerned about protein, I wouldn't take any protein powders or anything like that. I would just focus on the, uh, um, maybe the bean, the bean and legume family that, that has a lot of proteins. Or just, you know, do some research and find out what are the foods that have the most uh, protein in it, quinoa, and just start adding more of, that, more of that to your diet. For example, when I was doing the 26 marathons, I had a giant salad. But some days I, I would take a half a can of beans and just, you know, put it on there or um, cook up some quinoa and put it on top. So just making sure that I that I had enough protein. That was when I first started my uh, vegan diet. I had only been a year, maybe a year or two into it. And, you know, when, you, when you've been doing things a long time, you, you don't worry about it. But that was the, the first year or two. So I was still trying to make sure I had enough protein. Yeah. And uh, I'm just wondering, um, with the um, potluck that you guys have, are things clearly marked? Like if a vegan person wanted to go to the running um, get together? Uh, we, yeah, we don't have a mark, but um, it did. I mean, we're a small enough group where just ask. And most of, most of the, the runners that have been with, that been with our group a long time, they know I'm vegan. Um, there's a few other that... Um, that eat mostly vegan and um, plant-based and vegetarian. So we just make sure that um, if it is vegan, they're going to, you know, they'll know about it. Thank you so much for being on the show, Kavika. Um, we're out of time, so we have to wrap it up. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Kavika Carlson, founder of the Hawaii Running Project. Thanks. Thanks. Come on. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, come on, come on, walk with us, or come on, run with us. We love your members. No, yeah, it's gonna be. It'll be. Uh, you know, I want to drive my husband too. Um, but thank you, Jay, our broadcast engineer today, and the rest of the crew at Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you in two weeks for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. My next guest will be Nate Hodgson, founder of Kaimuki Compost Collective. If you have ideas for the shows or questions. For my future show guests, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceinhawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365 for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. <laughs>